All right, muchachos, in this video, you guys are gonna learn how to make it so that your Big Bang application reacts to keyboard presses. So what happens when you press keys on the keyboard and mouse events. So what happens when we move our mouse and click around, all right? And we're gonna learn by modifying our old example, the mushroom walk from the previous video, all right? That just draws the mushroom from left side, walking all the way to the right side of the screen until it walks off screen, all right? All right, so let's say that new requirements are coming in. Someone wants it so that, you know, they want you to add a feature that when you press the space key or the A key, the mushroom resets its position all the way back to the beginning, all right? So how do we modify our program to accommodate for that key press, all right? So let's just go back to the template steps, right? So we sketched everything and really we gotta do 1.5. Identify the Big Bang options. We gotta add the on key clause, right? Here are the Big Bang options. So if your app needs to change in response to a keyboard press, then it needs this clause, all right, on key. So if you click it, it should open some documentation for on key, all right? So here's the on key clause, let's so just add it to Big Bang. All right, so let's see, where is our Big Bang? Here we go. So we're gonna say on key, just a quick reminder, um, parentheses and square braces are exactly the same, all right? They're synonymous. What matters is you just don't do something like uh, you know, have a opening uh, parentheses with a closing square brace like so, right? This is a bug. Just be consistent. It's just a stylistic thing. All right. So in fact, I'll prove this by using parentheses for the on key case, all right? So here's on key. It, we have to give it a function, right? Uh, the key handler function, right? So I'm gonna call it handle key. You guys can name it whatever you want. All right. All right. So this function has to consume the world state and the key event and the handler result we won't really use, right? And they give us an example right here, right? This function must consume two arguments, right? The world state and whatever key we pressed on the keyboard, right? And it's represented in strings. And we need to use key equal, huh? To ask what key was pressed, all right? So let's go. So if we go back to the template page, if you scroll down, there should be a starting template for handle key, all right? And let's just use this to get started. All right, so we run this right now. It's gonna say, hey, where's the handle key function? It's not defined anywhere. So let's just define it right now. So here's handle key. All right, so as always, we're just gonna follow the HTDF right now. All right, so signature, this needs to be fixed. Um, world state, we said that it's gonna be mushroom, right? We renamed it in the previous video and uh, it has to produce a mushroom. All right, get rid of this. All right. And what is the purpose? What is your purpose? It is to reset the mushroom X coordinate when space or A key is pressed. All right. So next are the check expect, right? Some examples to really flesh this out. So handle key, again, must take two arguments. So what the heck is the first argument, right? Well, it's either the initial world state, so when the program starts, Right, it's either gonna be zero or whatever you know we call main width. So main of like 40, it's gonna start at position 40 on the X plane, right? So it's gonna either gonna be that or it's going to be you know update, right? And that's gonna keep incrementing by one every tick. So it just we have to give it a number because that's what it is, right? A mushroom, and we scroll up, right? We don't know what it is. What the heck is a mushroom? It's just a number and it represents the X coordinate of the mushroom. Uh, just a heads up, uh, there's a lot of confusion behind, you know, the image of a mushroom and what a mushroom in terms of data, right, what it is. Uh, in terms of data, it's a number, right? And, you know, students often conflate the image of Big Bang with this underlying data representation, right? We're representing its position with a number, but we're drawing it with, you know, uh, the image. So don't conflate those two if you can. All right. All right. So mushroom is a number, so we can just give it any number, right? Because it's just an X coordinate and that, you know, just keeps on going. So let's say it's 134. What happens when we press the key event? Let's say we press the space key, right? Well, we produce zero, right? We don't care what your um, uh, X coordinate it was. Uh, we don't care about what the world state was. We produce zero. All right. Let's just keep going. So let's see. What happens if we press the A key and the position is, it doesn't really matter, 42. 
you still have to produce zero, all right? Keep going. Let's do one example where it's not the space or the A key. So what happens when we uh, press, you know, T, right? And the position is, say, like uh, 64, right? Well, it should stay the same, right? If we press a key and, you know, it's not going to reset it, well, it should stay the same. And update's job is to keep incrementing it. So it'll be 65, next tick, and then we'll get 65 here. And, you know, if we press any key, it should still be 65, right? So, yeah. All right, so now we are in a better position to write out this function, right? So pause the video. This should be all the mental scaffolding needed to write this function, all right? All right, so three, two, and one. All right, so I'm assuming that you guys took a good swing at it. So, given that we press the space key, we want to reset it to zero, all right? Like this example here, right? We don't care about the uh, the mushroom's X position, right? The world state right now. Uh, we just care that we res reset it to zero when we hit space. Same with A, all right? So when the key uh, A is pressed, we just reset it to zero, no problem, all right? But what happens if all the other keys are pressed, right? Else we're using this to be all the other keys. So E, ASDF, et cetera, not ASD, not A, uh, SDF and et cetera, right? Uh, we just want it to be the same position, all right? Don't do anything to it, is what this means with the else case, right? So hopefully you see these examples matching up. I'm gonna rename this WS parameter name to M because that's what we did for all the other parameters, right? Uh, M abbreviated for the mushroom here instead of WS. All right, so there we go. I'm gonna press Control R to run this and we should get our desired behavior. All right, so we're gonna say main of zero and if I press space key, it's resetting. All right, and hopefully you guys can hear that. And if I press the A key, it is also resetting like so. All right. All right, so now let's add responding to mouse events. So now let's see that users are requesting that they want a feature that makes it so that the X position of the mushroom, so let's say the mushroom is like way over here already, right? It animated all the way to, you know, the end right side here, right? Uh, they want it so that when you click the mouse, uh, the mushroom instantly teleports to the X position of the mouse, all right? So this is the mouse click right here. Notice how it's way above the mushroom center point, right? We don't really care about the mushroom's Y position, right? We just care that it teleports to the to where the mouse is in the X plane, right? So it's like right over here, right? That represents the current X position of the mouse. All right, so let's just do that and add that into our application. So we just did the sketch, right? So identify the Big Bang options. So we need to make it so that if your app needs to change in response to mouse events, we have to use the on mouse clause. Okay, so let's just open this up. All right, so here's on mouse. Let's just add that in to our Big Bang clauses. All right, so right below the on key, right, we can do on mouse and we'll map it to the handle mouse function, All right, That is not created yet because we run it, it's gonna say, hey, it's not defined. All right, so we're gonna create that shortly. Let's just look at the documentation though. So on mouse expression, right, it's a function that takes in the world state and it gives the X position and the Y position, Y coordinates of the mouse and the mouse event for every noticeable action of the mouse by the computer user. The result of the call becomes the current world, right? So what is a mouse event, right? We know, you know, the X and Y plane are just numbers and the world state is also a number, right? That's just the mushroom's X position. Mouse event are these strings, right? It's an enumeration of strings. It's one of these, all right? So either button down, so left click, button down, left click, button up, so when it's released, drag, move, enter, and leave. Right now, our problem really states that, hey, we only really care about clicks, all right? So that's what we're gonna use. We only care about button down in this case, all right? So let's just go to the template page, and there is a starter template that we can use for the handle mouse function, all right? So there we go, just gonna paste it down, and I'm gonna do it right here. All right, here's handle mouse. All right, so handle mouse takes in the world state. We already said that it's the mushroom now, right? And which is just a number, being the x coordinate of the mushroom. All right, it should produce a mushroom in the end. All right, so that's the signature. We're just doing the HDF steps for this function. All right, all right, so next is the purpose statement. So set uh, mushrooms x position 
to that of the mouse X when the user clicks. Left clicks, to be more specific. All right. So signature purpose, stub. So the stub is just going to produce a mushroom because these don't produce anything. In fact, this is the template, right? But we're kind of at a position where we can start omitting the stub. But I'm just going to do it anyways. In the future videos, let's start omitting it. All right, we have to produce a mushroom, and we know that mushroom is just a number. So we're just going to put zero from here now so that we can run this against the, um, the tests, right, to make sure we have no errors in the test. All right, so let's go write our tests, write our examples. So check expect, handle mouse. So let's say that the mushroom is, we don't really care about the mushroom's position, right? We go back at our diagram here, right? Wherever it is, it doesn't matter if it's here, way on the edge of right here, or it doesn't matter if it's like way off screen. It doesn't matter if it's like in the beginning, right? We don't care about the mushroom's X. What we care about is that we set it and instantly snap it to where the mouse X is, all right? So this can be any number we want. So let's say, we'll just say, we'll give it arbitrary X coordinates because we don't care. All right, next is the mouse X, all right? So the mouse X is, you know, wherever it is on the canvas, all right? Uh, so here it is. Um, Big Bang is going to give us those coordinates. So if our mouse is over here, right, and we click, uh, Big Bang is going to call this function with the uh, mouse X and mouse Y. All right, so let's say it's like way over here. Uh, and, you know, our current canvas size is uh, 500 width, right? So that's our width. And the height is like 400. So I'm just going to eyeball it right here. That looks about to be half. It's like uh, 250 in X. And then in Y, it is, uh, let's see, three, 375. Let's just say that, right? It's going to pass those to the handle mouse function, right? So we're just, let's just use those numbers. So let's say it's at uh, 250, 250 and uh, a Y of 375, right? So let's see, that is the X coordinate of the mushroom, the X coordinate of the mouse. I'm gonna rename these parameters to mouse X and mouse Y, all right? I'm gonna do that actually later on. I should actually do that later on, but let's just keep things straight on our heads. Right, so that is mushroom X, mouse X, mouse Y, and then the mouse event. So that's just a string as we saw in the documentation. So there we go. All right, it's either one of these strings, and all we care about is button down for now. So button dash down. All right. All right. And let's say, what do we want it to produce? Well, we just want it to produce the X position of the mouse, which would be 250, right? Not the mushroom. We don't care about it anymore. You're now going to be 250. All right, let's do another example. All right, let's do it where we do button up, right? What happens when we have the mouse button up, right? We're not doing anything with the mouse. We let go. Uh, we don't really care. We just want the mushroom to keep going. So we don't care about the um, exposition of the mouse in this case. So it should stay one, two, three. All right, and you can cover all the other cases if you want. But uh, that's pretty sufficient enough, all right? It's a large enumeration. We don't really have to go through all the cases. As long as we, you know, have an else here, uh, we can ignore the rest of the cases. All right, so we run these. Our test should fail. And so they do, because 0 does not equal 250, right? Because we're just producing 0 to 50, right? That looks like there are no typos in the test themselves. So now let's just use the template and wrap this up. So I just said that this is the mouse X, just gonna rename it like so. All right, just to make things more readable from the get-go. Mouse X, mouse Y, and the world state we already established should be named M. All right, which is the mushrooms X. All right, that's just the number. And the mouse event is going to be, of course, one of these strings. All right, so Let's get this over with. Uh, let's see, define handle mouse. So handle mouse, what happens when you press, what happens when, you know, someone's left clicking? Well, we just care that uh, it's 250, right? Not 250, it's going to be the mouse X, right? So when the mouse is clicked, set it to the mouse X and don't care about the mouse, the mushrooms X, all right? And 
you know, if it's any other mouse click or if the mouse is not pressed at all, well, it's just going to be the mushrooms X, all right? So if we run this, we should get our desired behavior. So I'm gonna run main of zero. And now Big Bang should react to our mouse clicks. So I'm gonna click over here. Notice how it's teleporting over there. Click over here. So now I'm holding my mouse and dragging. So it's not accounting for that scenario. And I challenge you to add that case, right? Uh, you know, drag signals that the computer, the computer user is dragging the mouse. A dragging event occurs when the mouse moves while the bu mouse button is pressed, right? Try to change this to mouse drag and play it around with the, all the other options. But that is how you add mouse interaction with Big Bang. Thank you for watching, He-Man. If you wish to interact with more of your kind, join our Discord link in the description or on screen. If you want to aid in my quest for world domination, consider hitting the sub button. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it, thumbs down if you didn't. Any questions, comments, or suggestions, fire away below. Also, check out the annotations on screen for the next relevant video.